Okay, in this video, we're gonna wrap up the last two functions that are in the start process and menu that came out with the beta release of Ciro 1.2.0 beta one. We're gonna go through the desaturation of stars in your images, and we're gonna go through how to fix egg-shaped, stretched, or elongated stars, however you wanna to refer to them. We have a way of fixing that data now, and it's it's really fantastic. I'm really excited about fixing the elongated stars, right? The, they call it full resynthesis, so it'll create a synthetic star mask for you from the stars that are stretched out. I don't know how far out we can take this. I don't know how bad they have to be for the process not to work. But this image right here that I have, you can see the stars are really bad. Once I ran it through the full resynthesis, I got this. And you can see these stars are nice and perfectly round. It's, <laughs> I was like a kid with a new toy when I saw the result of this thing. So again, new feature, we're gonna cover it right now. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, running Ciro 1.2.0 beta 1. We're going to go through two processes today, desaturating the stars, and then the second one will be resynthesizing your stars. The second one requires using StarNet. So if you're not familiar with using StarNet that's been integrated into this version of Ciro, then go watch my video on the StarNet release within this version and come back and watch this one because we're not going to go over how to use StarNet. We're just going to use it as part of the process when we do the resynthesis. So I am going to open up my Cygnus loop result file that I've stacked using using the OSC preprocessing script and we're just going to do some quick work on it just give it a quick crop to get the artifacts out of there and then we'll do a quick rough background extraction just get some of these sample points off of the most of the nebula I'm not really worried about what this image is going to look like because we're just showing you how to fix your stars today. So we're going to compute the background and apply it. So the first thing we're going to go over is taking care of our saturated stars. And there's a perfect example in this one right on top of the Western Veil here. So the way the tool works is it's going to use the dynamic PSF function that they have built into Cyril. So by definition, a saturated star is a star that the center of it is completely clipped, right? It's all white across all three channels. And the way the PSF works, you know, the, the stars, think of them as a, a pinpoint of light. But by the time that light gets to us and it passes through our atmosphere, it's distorted and that light spreads out. So that's what the tool is going to use to desaturate these stars. Again, because the center is completely white, the outer edges of that star, of that spread, still contains data that is not completely blown out. So it'll analyze that and tone these things down for us. Otherwise, and it may not be with an image like this, it may not be that big of a deal, but if you have a lot of large stars in your image and they're saturated and you don't do anything about them, then when you go to stretch them, that's where the bloating happens on the stars. The more you stretch, the bigger and uglier the stars will get. In the past, sometimes you could kind of reel that back in by running deconvolution but deconvolution can only get you so far and it usually can introduce even more noise into the image so this is the new and improved way of taking care of your saturated stars so what we're going to do let me go back out into a fit view is first we need to run the dynamic psf tool and you can do that um, a couple different ways you can come up to the menu here and hit image information and then dynamic psf or and i'll close this you can come to image processing, star processing, and next to full resynthesis, hit the little gear icon here on the right, and it's the same dialogue. I think that's a little bit easier to get to that way, but however you want to do it. There's really only two things that we need to do here. First of all is set our profile type. You can choose Gaussian or Moffat. Cyril suggests the Moffat setting. They say you'll get better results for, from it. But again, just like everything else, you know, play with either one of them, see which one gives you the best results. These are just mathematical equations, so not much to explain about them. I'm just going with the recommended profile type from from Ciro right now, and it's and it's been doing well for me for the the few images that I ran this against. Once we have the profile type set, we're just going to come over here to our button with the three stars on here, which will detect the stars, and click on it. Give it a few seconds, and you will soon see that it'll detect all of the stars that it sees on our image. So once the detection is done, we're done with the dynamic PSF. Go ahead and hit the close button. Before we go any further, I just wanted to show you, we're gonna focus on this star up here. But if we come in even closer, you can see it, it did miss some of the really faint stars. Now you can adjust for that. 
in the dynamic PSF window that we just had open, but generally when they're this faint, it, it's not that it's not a big deal, right? And, and we're looking for saturated stars anyway. So, but if for some reason Cyril was to miss what looks to you to be a saturated star, like if we pick, let's see if we can find something here. Let's pick on this one up here. Let's say that I wanted that to be included in the selection. Then using my left mouse button, I can press and hold draw a selection around that star, hold my control key down, and then the space bar. And you can see it put an orange circle around that star. So now, and it opened up the dynamic PSF again because we added a star to the list. So that's how you can add stars if you need to. Um, again, we don't need this open any longer, so we're gonna hit close. Okay, so now all the stars have been detected. Again, the magenta ones are the ones that were determined to be saturated. Everything else in orange are fine. All we need to do now is to come back up to image processing our star processing menu and click on desaturate stars. Now over on the right, there is no progress bar like it is for other functions. Um, I've reached out to the developers and waiting to hear back. I think that's probably a bug. If it is, then it'll be fixed, I'm sure. But right now it just kind of hangs here, especially when you have over 20,000 stars detected. It's going to take a few seconds for it to get through everything. Just keep an eye on the console screen when it's done you'll see another execution time as the final line that'll indicate that it's completed its function. 13.65 seconds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my display mode to the ass sign. It gives us a little bit better representation. So you can see the star has been desaturated. If I come over to my left arrow here to undo, this is before the saturation and this is after. Now, if you wanted to, as a check, you can come back up to image processing and star processing, open up our dynamic PSF window. And I want to show you this for two reasons. First of all, like I said, you can check and see that in fact, it's not detecting these ones in magenta as being saturated any longer. And also to show you that uh, if you forget to do something that this actually won't work when you tell it to recalculate. So normally if you did not add any additional stars, you could just open this back up and you can click your star detect button again and you can see only detected one star and the reason it only detected one star is we still have our selection drawn up here so you want to make sure you click somewhere on the screen to take that box away before you hit your star detection button again so now we took that selection away because it was just looking in that selection so now we took that selection away now it's looking at the whole image again and you can see those two stars that we were looking at have gone orange if we go back out to a fit view, everything's orange. So at this point, again, open up the dynamic PSF window and hit your remove all stars button over on the right hand side. And your stars have been desaturated. So you can go through your the rest of your workflow to process this image, knowing that your stars are not going to get bloated now as you're stretching everything as one. So that's desaturation. Now we're going to go into the fun one, which is fixing your stretched or elongated or egg shaped stars. I have uh, some bad data from my Trifid Lagoon Nebula images that I took last July. And, you know, from a distance, it doesn't look too bad. But if I zoom in here, you can see how stretched my stars are. So I, I was having issues that night. Didn't realize it until the next morning. And I was kind of bummed out, but you know, the, the nebula came out good. So I didn't want to throw this data away. So I just tucked it away and, um, I'm glad I did because I had some, some good, bad data to show you guys how we can take care of this issue. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the Cygnus loop and just give everything a quick crop and background extraction. Again, I'm just whipping through it. I'm not worried too much about being perfect on this. We're gonna compute it and whatever it gives us, we're gonna run with it. So again, um, just like I mentioned in the StarNet video, where you need to be in a linear state to do this. And we're gonna change our view mode to linear. You don't need to, but I like to do it this way. Before we start trying to fix these stars, we want to split them out, right? We want a starless version and we want our star mask. So just like in the StarNet video, we're gonna come up to image processing, star processing, star net removal pre-stretch linear image and generate star mask and hit execute okay star net's done there's our starless image but what we need to do is open up our star mask so we're going to come over to open and we're going to find our star mask underscore result dot fit file open that up and we're going to use the dynamic psf tool just like we did for the desaturate option so we're going to come up to image processing 
start processing and hit our gear icon again. This time we're going to leave it in Gaussian. You can, again, play with the profile type if you want, but this is the one that worked well for me. And then come over and I'm going to show you what's going to happen first, and then we're going to adjust the setting. But hit our star detect button, and it is detected 5,746 stars, which isn't bad for these being stretched, but you can see all the ones that it's missed. So you can play with the roundness threshold. The roundness threshold will be less tolerant to the roundness of it. So if you decrease this, I'll take mine down to like 0.1 because I want to make sure I get all these stars that are visible and then hit the star detect again. Again, we have 5,000, so it just detected twice the amount of stars now. So if we zoom in here, you can see it's it's grabbed everything. All right, so let's go back to a fit view. And once again, we do not need dynamic PSF, so we're going to close that. We're going to come back up to image processing, star processing, and just hit full resynthesis. Again, there's no progress bar down on the bottom. Just watch the console for the execution time to pop up. That'll be your indication that it's finished. And that'll be it. We'll take a look at our stars and, and show you what it did to the star mask. And it's not just making a synthetic mask. I mean, it is a synthetic mask, but it's also using data from the original star mask. So any colors that are in the star, that, st that stuff is copied over. So you're not just getting a pure white star mask. If there was colors in the original, the colors will be here as well. Before we zoom in, let's go back up into dynamic PSF again. And just clear out our star selection. And we'll change our display mode to the ass sign. And if we zoom in, look at those stars. It's, it's just incredible. It, it, it just blew me away the first time I used it. Those things, those stars were, were had a really bad stretch to them because of my issues that I had that night, and, and it has it has corrected it. All these stars are nice and round. So, I mean, it's, and it's that simple. So the, the star is fixed. At this point, very important, because I always forget to do this, <laughs> make sure you click your save button, right? Duh. We want to we want to save the changes to the star mask result fit file. So let's come over and hit your save button. Now I'm going to come back into image processing, star processing. And we're going to open up the star recomposition window. And on the left hand side, we're going to load in our starless image. All right, we got that in the background. And on the right hand side, we're going to grab our star mask. And I mean, that's just, well, here, let me, I need to be in linear. So we have the proper stretching going on here. So we'll, we'll stretch this a little aggressively. And if you watch my StarNet video, when we were doing this blending, I mentioned that I would never recommend doing what I'm doing right now, doing your, all of your initial stretching in one fell swoop in here with this tool right now, if you hit apply, it closes it and you're done and your stars are blended back in. And now if you do any more stretching with the stretching tools up in here, no matter which one of the three you're using, well, now you're stretching your stars as well. And that's just not the point of separating the stars. I did hear back from the developers on that, and they agreed with me that it should not be closing when they clicked apply. So they're going to be making a change where you can do iterative stretching within the star recomposition tool without it closing when you hit apply. They also mentioned that it's probably going to take a while for them to do that. I guess it's not a simple thing to do. So anyways, back to putting the stars back in. So we stretch the starless mask over on the left. Now we come and stretch our stars back in, however much we want to bring them in. And again, I mean, it's they're nice and round. Let's call that done and knock out this green noise a little bit. And if we zoom in, I mean, that's just fantastic. That That saved my data. Right. The only way to fix that previously would have been just to reshoot it. So one last thing I noticed on Cyril's website is under their tips section, the very last one, synthetic star tools cannot synthesize diffraction spikes yet. So I'm thinking in a future release, we're going to be able to add diffraction spikes to some of our stars for those of us that like those in the images sometimes. So that would be pretty cool. So how's that for a cool feature, right? I, 
I was excited about Starnet. Now I'm just over the top about this whole resynthesis feature that they gave us. I'm telling you, Cyril's just getting better and better with every release. I'm going to say it right now. GIMP is to Photoshop like Cyril is to PixInsight. I know PixInsight can do a lot more still, but the day's coming. Mark my words. Free and open source. They're going to give them a run for their money. So once again, I appreciate everybody's time. Thanks for watching the video. If you found it helpful, leave a comment, drop a like. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video in clear skies.